Hi and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. Today I'm going to talk about the threshold adjustment layer, which is something I use to make fun graphics, especially for family photo albums. The examples that I have here, you can see this one is a graphic I made for a trip I went on with my mom to Italy. The second graphic is from a trip I went on recently with my husband and our boys to Grand Junction. Start by obviously opening Photoshop and then open the image that you plan to use. I'm going to use a picture that is already converted to black and white since it helps me visualize what this is going to look like when it's finished. This will make more sense when you actually see this adjustment in action. I actually converted this to black and white in Lightroom. I tend to do most of my adjustments there and then do the fun pixel moving fancy stuff in Photoshop. I like to use this panel at the bottom of the screen for adjustment layers. So if you go to this little half moon icon, so it's a circle that's half black and half white, you can see when you hover on it, it says create new fill or adjustment layer. Click on that and you can see there's quite a few different options down here. You can also go to layer, new, and then pick adjustment layer and pick it there. So either spot works. Just because I'm used to the program, I tend to use this shortcut. So I'm going to pick threshold and it'll show this little screen option here. What you can do once this opens up, you can see how within this picture what it's done is this adjustment layer is looking at your photo, your original photo, and making every pixel it's deciding to either convert it to white or to black. If you move this slider over, you're telling it to make more of those colors black to sort of kind of shift where that borderline is. If you bring it this way to the left, it will make more of those pixels white. So just kind of shift that around and play with it until you're happy with the final result. So I'm just going to shift this a little bit. I think that looks good. Once again, you can really see here why I like to convert it to black and white first for this. Sometimes I just like to up that contrast and get a better an idea of what will be dark and what will be light. I feel like you can see it better. So I can go ahead and close that little X once I'm happy with it. Now I have my adjustment filter set and I have my graphic kind of in action. I'm actually going to hold the shift key and select both and go to layer and then go to merge layers. To be honest, normally what I do is just hit this command or control E because it's faster. Now I'm gonna make a new layer via copy, so command or control J, and then hide my background layer. The only reason I do that is just so that it allows me to have kind of a backup copy with what I worked with. The reason that I merged the layers is because when I start to play with this and paint on it, it works better just to have it flattened. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and take my paintbrush and you can see it's white right there and I'm going to fill in this corner because I actually want that to be all white down here in this corner and then bring my brush size up like so. Ooh, that's way too big. All right, bring it down a little bit and do that some more. Once again, I'm just doing that so that it makes it more of a graphic. Next, I'm going to go ahead and I think I actually want to cut out some of this background in here because I want to make this like a simple shape. I'm going to go ahead and use my quick selection tool and select the dinosaur itself. So the actual silhouette of this dinosaur. This part might get a little tricky. My computer is a little bit slow right now because I've kind of overwhelmed it with graphic software. So I've got this area selected right now. I'm going to go ahead and hit, once I get that edge, select inverse. And that's just going to make it easier so that when I use my paintbrush, I don't have to worry about covering over this shape here. So you can see I can just go over with my paintbrush and not worry about hitting anything I didn't mean to. Just makes it faster, I think. All right. I'm going to go ahead and deselect because I don't need to worry about that anymore. I'm going to go up to the edge of this dinosaur here and I am just removing all these white spaces and oops, a little too much. So this takes some playing with it and it'll take you some time. I have to kind of decide where I want the edge of that to be. This looks a little sloppy, <laughs> but you can just get an idea of where I have those different edges going.
or you can get an idea of where I'm erasing the background from. Like I said, I'm just doing this rather quickly since it's kind of boring to watch me fill in white. There are some selection tools that you can use. Like I said, you can use the quick selection. Sometimes it's kind of tricky to get it to really find that edge nicely though. So I'll just come in and use my paintbrush and fill it in white because a lot of times it's just faster. Once again, just covering that up, I'm gonna go ahead, take a little bit of this edge in here you really, for these detailed places, should probably bring your brush size down so that it's easier to work with, so you can get into these little nooks and crannies. If you have a Wacom tablet, so it's like a little pen-operated mouse, you can see how this would be much, much easier, but I don't have one of those, so we're just gonna do it this way. So drag this across, and you can see how I'm starting to form the outside edges of my shape. Like I said, when I use the threshold filter, I start by applying that, or I should say adjustment layer, not filter, it kind of looks like a filter, but I start by applying that adjustment, then I will go in with my paintbrush tool so that I can go ahead and refine the graphic, if you will. You kind of need to simplify it. You'll have all those extra distracting places. And if you are using this as a graphic, you usually don't want to have all those little fuzzy pixels that you saw in that first image. So go ahead, erase some of the edge of that. You can see how that's starting to look a lot better. I'm going to go ahead and finish up with this. Erase a little more. And I'm pretty happy with how this looks. What you can do if you're doing a photo album, so let's pretend you're working with a blank page. A landscape is what I tend to work with, and let's just pretend for this example that it's eight and a half by 11. I'm gonna go ahead and make a blank template page, and go ahead and fill that background in white. I can now take this picture, copy it, and paste it into this document. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Command or Control T, so that I can bring this over down here in my corner. And you'll see where I'm going with this next. So I can bring this down into the corner of my page, like so. Hit the little check when you're done. And next, what I want to do is go to this opacity setting. I'm actually gonna take that opacity setting down and you can see how that makes it just a nice subtle background of the image. I'm going to go ahead and open my finished page so you can see what mine looks like. Once again I showed it at the beginning but you can see it here as well. So here is my graphic that I used on our final book. You can see I put this borderline in this page. I did that because obviously the top of that scale on the stegosaurus or armored plate on the stegosaurus was missing so that kind of was a way of hiding that you can see how that's missing right there so once again this is the threshold feature so it is an adjustment layer found down here in this section or you can go to layer and then new adjustment layer so there's all those different options there there you go, there you have it, how to make a threshold adjustment layer in Photoshop and create some fun graphics for your family albums. Enjoy!